Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back for episode number 142 of Two Guys, One Cartridge. Myself, Sam, and Daryl here. And how's it going, buddy? Why don't I ever do the intro anymore? I don't know. Why don't you do the intro anymore? I don't know. It's just, it just kind of became an assumed thing. Like, it used to be mostly you, but sometimes I would do it, and I can't remember the last time I did an intro. It's been some time since you've done an intro. Actually, I yeah. think... uh it's just, I remember the old days of 2G1C, it used to be a fight of who was going to do the intro. Not to who wanted to do it, it was just like who had to do it. Cause yeah, no, nobody, nobody nobody wanted to do it. Yeah, nobody wanted to do it because everyone was like, we got a couple of something funny and clever on the spot. And like now it's just like the standard, you know, this is the show, this is the episode yeah. number, this is me, this is you, how's it going, buddy? I don't even remember anything <laughs> funny coming out of the old intros. No... It was mostly just some certain people, certain a certain person making probably terrible jokes that nobody thought was funny. <laughs> it's very possible. Which it seemed, is. which was par for the course. But. Well, you all can look forward to next week where Daryl gets to do the intro. Oh, yay! <laughs> At least we have one thing planned out for the show for a change. Hey! <laughs> but, you know, but for the most part, you and I really don't need to plan because no. we both kind of just do our thing and know what we're supposed... That's the thing. If you know what you're supposed to do and you know your role, you don't really have to do planning for anything. Yeah. You just know to bring everything together and yeah. we're here. Yeah. And I am not drinking beer tonight. Neither am I. Oh, man. This is going to be a lame show. This show is, yeah, I was going to say, this show is going to be terrible. The two sober fuckers. <laughs> just, right, yeah. This, this is, this is, we should just cancel now, man. Just... Yeah, we're going to go on a beer break. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I have a little bit of exciting news real quick here. Uh, not really gaming related, but sort of is because it ties into something else. Uh, my brother Dan, who is in the Army, just got back from Korea yesterday. Well, he got back the other day, but he got to Pittsburgh yesterday evening. And uh, come to find out that that guy still plays Diablo 3. <laughs> You're shaking your head at me. Uh <laughs> He has over 400 hours logged in Diablo 3, as I checked his his timers and everything else. And uh, he's telling me the game has gotten more interesting with the power levels and everything else, and the new gear sets and the uber bosses they threw in there. And I was like, oh, well, I guess uh, you know, I'll give it a shot. So the first thing he does, he pulls his laptop out, he logs in, he shows me his stats, and he's got like 200,000 DPS unbuffed. And then I look at, I log into my account, and I look at mine, I had 28,000 DPS on Buff, and I went, what the fuck? How is and, that even possible? And that was considered a lot, like, you had more than I did when I stopped playing. Yeah, that was, that was considered, well, it wasn't considered best, definitely not, but it was considered, you know, higher up there. You, you definitely had put in a lot of time into your gear. Mm -hmm. So, you were buying the best stuff that you could find. Yeah, if I would, you know, be selling shit left and right, doing gear runs just to sell the stuff off, to have enough to go to the auction house and make some money off of it. And then I was selling all my tomes and everything else to make more money and just scrounging by just to make, you know, buy one piece of gear that definitely gave me a decent stat boost. It was, it was hard times playing Diablo back then. Very much so. So he said, well... You got to, uh, he's like, there's so much new, there's so much more new gear out there and there's new sets. So I have the, 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 I had, what I had done originally is I said to hell with it. I took $10, I threw it into my Diablo wallet and I just, or my Battle.net wallet, I guess, really. I don't know if they're shared. I guess they're shared. I don't know. I said to hell with it. I'm just going to go buy the, the Talrasha set, which is the, the wizard set, uh, set, uh, that they have. And that was what gave me the huge increase and everything else. And I was like, and I was having some, uh, an easier time running through stuff. But then I find out that all the, the Talarasha stuff that I have is considered legacy. It even says it when you look for it. It's <laughs> legacy shit. <laughs> Why are you wearing this was also underneath the, uh. Yeah, the that was, that was a little, uh, flavor text on it. Why yeah. are you wearing this? Yeah. Why are you wearing this still? And, and uh, I found that there's a new Talarasha set and, of course, after, <laughs> at, and, and I, I had a dollar, I had a dollar left in my wallet, and now that you can buy, um, 
you can buy gold through the real money auction house and everything else. I took that dollar and I bought 40 million gold with it. it so, like, so now I'm going to assume then that gold has gotten considerably cheaper. 25 cents for 10 million. Yeah, that's gotten considerably cheaper. Yes. So one dollar bought me 40 million gold. Immediately started going out, and I was just doing a price point of two million, anywhere from two million to five million for gear. And I replaced my entire set, everything. I bought some of the new set pieces. I bought all the rings, amulets, helmets, everything. Weapon. Dan bought my weapon for me because he was looking. He's like, oh my god, and he gave it to me because it had increased with the with the actual built-in stat and the gem slot stat. It had 200% in, 200% increase to critical strike damage with one piece of gear. And I was like, hot damn! And that jumped my DPS by I don't know how many, how much. And then I, actually I, I kind of know because if I look at other pieces of, uh, or other pieces, other weapons now, it says it drops my DPS by about 100,000. So <laughs> maybe I don't want to put this on. Uh, so yeah, now my DPS on buffed is about 140,000. So I went from 20,000 to 140,000. Just like that. Just like that. <clears throat> and so Dan and I are running through his experience run, as he calls it, uh, on monster power level five. For those who don't know or have, you know, walked away from Diablo a long time ago, like I did, um, you can actually increase the difficulty of the actual mobs in the game. So if you're playing on Inferno mode, for me, just playing on Inferno mode itself was enough to say, this sucks, I'm going to get killed over and over again, because I never beat Act 2. Yeah, that it was it was not fun. I played a little bit through Act 1, and I was like, yeah, this just isn't for me. Yeah, we made it through Act 1 with little difficulty. We made it to Act 2, and it just was this immediate jump in, dear God, this sucks. There's a huge difference when you walk into a room with 140,000 DPS versus 28,000 DPS on the same difficulty level. Things just die by looking at you. And that's what I ended up doing. Because, I, well, I play a little bit t- today by myself. Because, like, my goal now is just to go through and beat the game. And I actually feel kind of bad about it because I'm way too overpowered to be in there. It feels like I'm playing on normal with elite gear. I, it feels like I went back to the Night Elf starting zone. At level 90, and, ex- <laughs> and expected a challenge, you know, to compare it to another Blizzard game. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that That's exactly what it feels like right now. So now I feel like I have to turn the power level back up, because it just, it's just not going to be, it's not going to be fun. It's, it's not challenging. All I'm doing is just running through to get the achievement, and that just, like, even for me as an achievement hunter, that just, that just doesn't feel right. Yeah, it feels, it's, it sounds like kind of cheating in a way, I guess. I'm glad that they- they finally added in better gear, but for me, as an old Diablo player, it was always about the gear hunt. For me, just buying gear off of the auction house wasn't fun. I mean, that just does not appeal to me. I want to be able to find gear drops and upgrade my character that way. The other thing I wanted to ask you about was, have they made any changes to to the layouts of the overworld or anything like that, or is it still pretty much static? Like it was before. That was my other big complaint about the game is there was just no randomization. Everything was so static, it was boring to play through. Well, the maps are. I mean, the areas are randomized to an yeah, extent. But to an not, extent. But yeah, but not like it was. No, I mean it, it, there is some random. I, I don't know because okay. I, I definitely haven't. Um, I haven't been running through it the way that I was running through it, because when I, when I was doing my runs, I was going for the achievements in the game, and I, that means I was trying to find all the special events in each zone, and sometimes the special events don't show up, sometimes it shows up in the north side of the map, sometimes it shows up in the south side of the map, which basically forced you every single time to just run through the entire the entire area looking for something. It didn't show up, well, time to exit, reload, and come back in, and you know, rinse and repeat until you finally pulled it off. In terms of you know the the actual randomization, I, I don't know. I mean, I really I, I can't I I can't imagine at this point that they've changed it. If they do, that would sound like it was something that would take place in the expansion pack, which Blizzard really hasn't talked a lot about, from what I can see. I believe some places have said they're talking about next year. I can imagine we'll have an announcement at BlizzCon, which is a, still a few months away. I think it's. What is it? October no, or November? November, I think. I think yeah, I was going to say, normally it was in October in years past, but I think they pushed it back this year. But I can, I imagine we'll hear about it at BlizzCon, hopefully, 
they'll have an announcement and go into some more detail on some of the things that they're going to be changing. Because Blizzard expansion packs traditionally do change a lot of a lot of features in the game. So hopefully, with the expansion content, we'll get a little bit more like old style Diablo layouts. And I'll look at the game again, possibly. But if it's just more of the same Diablo three stuff that doesn't interest me, I won't even pick it up. I mean, I can still log into my Diablo 3 account for whatever reason. Not that I want to, but I could. <laughs> so I would consider it if they had some features that would appeal to me, but we'll have to see once BlizzCon rolls around. Yeah, I mean, the last big announcement we got from Blizzard was the fact that Diablo 3 was coming to the console. Yeah, uh, which it actually did come out, or no... Did it, did it come out yet? I, I, I remember, no, it's not. I, rem- I remember, I read, actually read an article over at PC Games N, and they talked about Diablo 3 on the console, and there actually are some improvements to Diablo 3 that are not on the PC version. I'm trying to load the article here. Since I actually wasn't even aware we were going to be talking about Diablo 3, I would have had it up already. <laughs> but it looks like they have so they have joint controller support. Obviously, it's on a console. So, and they actually praised it. They said it actually feels pretty good for the most part, except that aiming with spells, things of that sort, is a little bit more difficult, which is to be expected. You don't get that precision like you get with a mouse. Yeah. You can you can dodge. There's a dodge ability in the game, which I don't believe. I don't. There isn't a dodge in Diablo Three, is there? Uh-uh. On the PC, not, 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 a, not, not a real dodge. No. Yeah, there, now there is on on the console version. There is something called Nephilim Glory. So it says, as you play, you see gold blobs fall from enemies, like you see the with the health pickups. Picking up the Nephilim Glory globes increases your damage output. It's a stacking buff, which gets stronger, but it's also a time bonus, meaning if you want to maintain your buff, you have to press on and kill more enemies. Right. And then it also has an offline mode, which is not on the PC version, and there's no auction house either. So I guess they just couldn't figure out a way to monetize the real money auction house like they had on the PC. I think there's probably too much you know, legalese and gray areas and stuff being that it's on the console and it's a lot more of a closed platform. There probably was no way that they could work that out. That's why there's no auction house. I guess they figured they were either going to go all the way, all in or none at all. Yeah. I, uh, hmm. Now they've also said that there's less loot in the game, but you get more gold. More gold, but less loot. Yeah, more gold, less loot. So, but no it definitely, it, it definitely sa- yeah, no option now. So it definitely sounds like a pretty different game than not, we not, have on PC. You say no, do you mean no real money and no normal no, auction? No, uh, from, it, it says in this article here there's no option house. Ugh. I don't so, know about that. Well, you know, that's how the old, old, um, now hold on here. Because the, the the title of the of this section of the article says no option house, but the, in the in the in the article itself it says there's no real money option house. So I don't know. I don't know. There has to be a standard option house. There has to I be. I don't know. There don't, has to be. Go on, it's Diablo. I don't know. It's, well, this is the only Diablo game that has an option house. You're aware of that. The other games didn't. So it's not like that's some like long-standing tradition of Diablo. Well. Yeah. Well, yeah, okay. <laughs> but this article, it, it, it's, it has, I mean, I didn't, I was not aware that they were making any of these changes. I figured that there would be some differences between the console and PC version, but not like this. They even say that it, it, I guess they got their hands on with it. They said it, they said on, on balance, the console version feels more fun to play than the PC version. And yeah, it actually says that it's slightly better. A slightly better version than what we got. At times, you know, here's the thing. At times, I would think that Diablo would be a good controller-based game because of having, you know, just being a, a twin analog shooter at times for things like my my wizard class, for instance, because I just use magic missile all the time. That it would feel at times maybe uh, a little bit easier to use controller because, like, if there's so much shit going down. And, like, there's monsters all over the place. I'm casting AoEs. There's explosions going off. Sometimes I lose my mouse cursor 
in in the fray. So I don't know exactly where I am. And at least with uh, an, an analog stick, I know which way I'm trying to aim for at all times. Uh, that would be like the only thing I could think of that would make me you know want to play with a, a controller over a keyboard and mouse for for that because the twin analog shooters at times just feels feels better sometimes not always but sometimes and and that's actually the opposite of what they said on here since like I said they said that the joypad is not quite as precise when talking about aim uh ranged attacks things of that sort and then like I said blizzard and stuff like that they said it was you could you were you had a higher tendency to miss with those kinds of attacks as opposed to on the PC where it's a lot easier to aim something like that but you know without having our hands on it's difficult to say it could just be this one guy you never know so i think it's all i got for diablo i think it's, okay uh Except for the fact that I got, now I feel like I have to crank the difficulty back up again. It just doesn't feel fun. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't feel like, so basically, you're gonna end up turning the game up back to Inferno, old Inferno difficulty? Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and find what Inferno difficulty should be now. I just don't understand. To me, it just seems so pointless. I mean, you're just gonna turn the game back up and then you're not gonna have the, and then you're not gonna have good enough gear to, Go on that level, so you have to go back to the auction house and buy gear, just like you have to do in the old days. I'm and not it's just, gonna, I'm not gonna, it just crank seems it like up. a repeating cycle. I'm not gonna crank it up all the way. Well, I'm obviously. Just, I'm yeah. just gonna give myself a challenge again. So, well, Power Level 5 felt decent. So, I think I'm gonna go back to that. That was, that was, that was a good, good run still. Well, I mean, that just goes back to what I was saying about randomization and the game just kind of being the same thing every time. To me, it just, I'm just, I can't think of a reason right now why I would want to play Diablo 3. Oh, I no. mean, it just, it just doesn't sound like they've made major or really any improvement on the criticisms that I had of the, of the game of the, a couple weeks after it came out, which was it ended up just being really repetitive and boring very quickly. I don't know. I beat Torchlight 2 about four or five times. So, <laughs> same, same, same style of, of gameplay and everything else. Mm. The only other one I I mean, I haven't gone through and played Helsing again. That's kind of left it alone after beating it the first time. But that's because of your desire to get done, get get through your catalog, though. Yes. <laughs> and I made a horrible mistake by going back to Diablo. But again, my brother's back, and it's one of the few games that he and I play together. And I made a shocking discovery early when I said to him something like, well, yeah, you should just use Steam. And he's like, well, what? Like, Steam. What? Yeah. <laughs> Steam. No, not ringing any bells. Oh, so then I had to show him, I had to show him Steam last night. And then I showed him my library and he went, what the hell? <laughs> so. More, more games than any sane person should ever actually own. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sounds about right. Mm-hmm. But uh, I went back and started... Because after you were playing through Darksiders, it made me really want to go back and play Darksiders again. And it's been a while since I played it, and then they had the uh, the season pass for Darksiders 2 on there for like $3 or something like that over the weekend. So I ended up buying the season pass, but I was like, well, now I want to play Darksiders again to get familiarized with the story again, and I'll go play Darksiders 2. And I realized how frustrating Darksiders could be at times. Not having an actual dodge and that just that dash out of the way thing, but then whenever you dash, you stop in place for a second or two before you can move again. Uh <laughs> When I play games like Deadpool or Devil May Cry and everything else, where I can constantly just jump around the stage like crazy, and then I go to a game like Darksiders where I'm kind of locked in place at times, it makes it a learning experience all over again. But I think I'm about halfway through the game, because you only have to kill the four Watchers, and then you have to go after the Destroyer, right? Or, or you have to go to the four Watchers, and then the Demon from the beginning of the game, and then the Destroyer. Yeah, it's it's... <clears throat> I think it's it's the destroyer and then the and then there's the final boss against the like head angel or whatever. I can't remember his name, but yeah, the, I don't think the destroyer is not the last boss. There's one more after him. Uh, yeah, that has been a long time since I played yeah. when it first came out. I don't remember. It's been it's been a few years since it I, since it came <laughs> out, and I saw Darksiders two on Steam sales as well. But I was like, you know, I did just play through it, Darksiders one. 
And it's a, I would go back and play through it again, but I'm kind of in the same boat as you where I'm trying to get the last of my games banged out because uh, I played through it on the normal difficulty and ended up being, you know, it, at points it was challenging, but other times I, uh, other times I was, most of the time really, it didn't provide much challenge to me. And not because I'm like pro or whatever, but just because I felt <laughs> like it was just a little, well, it was a little undertuned, I think. And the biggest things for me were just, it is a buggy game. There were sections of the game where I did have crashes. It would just, you know, randomly just crash out of nowhere. Didn't seem to like alt-tab very much. I, I tended to get crashes when I alt-tab. I would see all kinds of clipping issues. See, I don't <laughs> have any problems with that. You know what my big problem is? Is mm-hmm. all of my cutscenes, half the screen showing. Well, in my cutscenes, see, it they didn't redo the cutscenes for the PC. What they did is they just kind of scaled them up to resolution, so they look like shit. Yeah, they do. They look like crap on the PC. They really do. So that might be some kind of issue with that that you're experiencing. I no, didn't no, have actually, that. Actually, uh, I found out because I went to the forums because it drove me nuts right away because I started, you know, the like all the logos and everything on the screen, even the, the preloading and everything. Was half screen. The gameplay it must be itself. An Nvidia thing. No, it was a Microsoft security update. Oh. Yeah. Huh. Um, KB something something something. You know, because I can always remember what the actual. Yeah, you don't. Are. You don't have to read that off to us. Yeah. No. <laughs> uh, but uh, there was a recent. I don't know how recent, but there was an update from Microsoft. It was one of security updates that. Uh, a user, I don't know how they figured this out. I guess just by deleting, maybe they had it working and then they updated and then they found the mm-hmm. problem. Uh, you know, you start deleting one by one until you find the issue. Uh, come to find out that in fact, uh, it was a security update from Microsoft that caused the problem and caused the screen to go, you know, cut in half. And I thought that was really weird. <laughs> and so I, you know, I was like, oh, okay, well, sure, I'll, I'll give it a shot. Why the hell not? It doesn't sound like it will work, but, you know, so I deleted the security update and boom, full video again. Son of a bitch. And, uh, so I can play Darksiders and watch all the, uh, horribly rendered cutscenes. Yeah, it's just, <laughs> they're just pathetically bad. And, yeah, and it's, and at times too, the controls, I think the control, I mean, it obviously was not built, it was, it's a pretty clear console port. Overall, they did a pretty good job with it, but there were still some issues that I think that did detract from the experience a little bit. And I think it only supported an, an Xbox controller too. Which I don't have one. So, and that, that emulator joy to pad or whatever the hell it's called, that mm-hmm. thing just doesn't work for me at all. It just doesn't work. So I'm, I'm stuck basically with if it doesn't work with my Logitech, then I have to use my PC, you know, my, my mouse and keyboard. Yeah. So, and it, it wasn't a game that was built for that. I will make one quick summarization of the game. It feels like, cause you made the complaint about you get the backtrack a lot in it. And well, I didn't complain about it. I mean, there are certain points where it, you may not necessarily know where to go. I mean, I didn't mind having to go back through old areas. I, backtracking doesn't bother me, but you do have to backtrack, yes. I The only thing that came to my mind was Resident Evil, the hack and slash platformer edition. That's that's what came into my mind. Cause, yeah, that's what you do in Resident Evil. You run around the mansion, you find a keyhole, you go down ten different rooms, you find the key, you run back down the ten rooms again, you put that key in. Oh, there's another key you need. You go look in another ten rooms. You keep on coming back. You go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth the whole time. And that's what this game is at times. And uh, I think it's during the second boss that that area where you have to, you know, part of it's underwater, and you have to uh, really run around finding all kinds of stuff, going underwater, checking this area. Okay, go all the way down here, find this. Go all the way back here, find this. You have the power up now. Okay, now I can go back. And, you go, and it's just, you just go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I actually got so backwards, I had no idea where I was supposed to go anymore. I ended up running completely out of the dungeon. <laughs> I was yeah, like, uh, uh, whoops. That's the kind of area where you don't want to stop playing it for a few days and come back and pick it up and try to figure out where you left off because you're going to be lost. Oh, yeah. Every single time I would put the game down, I made sure that I completed an area, like I was moving on to the next area before uh, I would put it down and come back to it again. And that's the area of the game I got a lot of crashes into, so some of those parts of that area I had to do you know, three or four times before it would finally go through. Well, like the, the semi-L areas, just going back to him. 
The the whole area. Oh, okay. Yeah, the whole area. I mean, there, yeah, like I said, you know, two, three, four crashes in certain areas of that, in the, of that part of the game. And it was, eh, it was, it was fun. I had fun with that. It was a lot of fun having repeated crashes for no, for no explainable reason. <laughs> well, since we're on that topic of those, those kind of games, I did play through Warhammer 40,000 Space Marine and I beat it last Wednesday. I had I had to get it done because I had other things, other gaming business to attend to mm-hmm. that I can't talk about. Yep. But overall, it was a pretty good game. It it is that kind of hack and slash and actiony style of game. It's kind of similar to um, Dark Siders in that respect, but they are two pretty different games. Space Marine is a lot more linear. There is none of this overworld map, and let's go back, and we found a new item, and now we can go unlock this other area of the game. It's just basically point A to point B. Now, it's not saying that's a bad thing, because it is still a lot of fun blowing up orcs Mm -hmm. again and again and again and Mm -hmm. again and again with lots of different weapons. And the weapon variety in the game is pretty cool, too. I found a certain layout of weapons that I enjoyed, and I'm sure other players will be different. Some people probably prefer the plasma gun. I was a, uh, I like the melted gun and the last cannon myself. Give me a little bit of long range and up close punch. But the one cool thing about it is I really, really liked using the thunder hammer in the game. So the thunder hammer is basically what it sounds like. It's a giant hammer and it has thunder, or like lightning. And when you hit the ground, it sounds like thunder, basically. Oh. So it's really loud. It doesn't really sound exactly like thunder, but it's pretty, it's pretty loud and has pretty cool effects and stuff. So there's certain points of the game where when you get a jet, a jet pack, you, you equip it automatically. I think there's one point where you equip it automatically and then it becomes a weapon you can pick up periodically after that. The bad side about it is you can't use any of your heavy weapons while you're using it. You can only use your regular bolter and your bolter pistol. So like for example with me, I had a last cannon and a melty gun. I couldn't use those weapons while I had the thunder hammer. Hmm. Yeah, so I guess it's just a balance thing because nobody would ever trade out their Thunder Hammer for anything else if they couldn't. Because otherwise you have your Chain Sword and your Power Axe. So I use the Power Axe otherwise. And there are certain points of the game where it's like you have to have your heavy weapons to get through them. But when you get it, it's pretty awesome because it's definitely more powerful than the other weapons, the other the other melee weapons in the game that you can get. I mean, you you just you destroy everything with the thunder hammer. It's it's pretty awesome. Thunder hammer. No, yeah, no, I won't play. <laughs> but overall, it was it was fun. I beat it on the hardest difficulty, so there's really nothing left for me to go back and do. Mm-hmm. There were a couple points that were pretty frustrating. It was like, man, I got to go through this again. But I didn't really run into any any bugs, anything game breaking. I mean, a, a little bit buggy here and there. But overall, it was a pretty well-constructed port, lots of graphics options like you would expect. I don't think I had any problem, like, rebinding any of my keys or rebinding anything to my mouse or anything like that. Like, some games won't let me rebind to my mouse 4 and 5 buttons, which are the ones on the side. Some of these console port-type games won't let you do that, so. But mm. overall, it was it was stable and much more stable than Darksiders, definitely. I think it was I think it was a little bit shorter than Darksiders, but I've only paid I think maybe five dollars for it at the most. Let me see here. So Darkside oh okay, yeah, it's a lot shorter than Darksiders. Now this is from like one and a half playthroughs, but I put twenty five hours into Darksiders versus Ooh. versus only eight a seven for Space Marine. So even on one playthrough if I put 15 hours into Darksiders, which I probably did, if not more than that, I've like more than double a Space Marine, and there's really no reason to ever go back and play Space Marine again because I've beaten it. And uh, let's see it. here, Darksiders. I am. Let's see here. So I'm moving on to the third boss. Okay. It's the Stygian. And, uh, I am at seven hours in, and I think part of that is because I left my game open when I left. So, Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so because there's a Stygian, there's the fourth boss, then there's a couple more things. So I I still got some more I gotta get through. Yeah, you you got, yeah, you got a ways to go on that. I'm thinking it's probably gonna be about 12, 13 hours before I, until I actually beat it. And then, uh, who knows from there? I, I'm just gonna have to go ahead and close my eyes, move my mouse around the screen and go, you! 
<laughs> See, luckily I've gotten mine down to a to a very manageable number of games here. I have six left. <laughs> so I, I had installed Battlefront too. Uh. Yeah, I started playing that. It's it's pretty cool, but so far it's pretty damn easy. And from what I read online of the reviews and all that, they say that the AI is pretty stupid, and it really is. The, the enemy AI is just not smart at all. So you gotta play a, that with friends. You gotta, you gotta play that with people. Yeah, but but I mean, I'm I'm not. I mean, I'm just gonna play through the campaign and then be done with it. Which I'm already on like the fifth their sixth mission and there's only like 18 of them so it sounds like it's a pretty short single player campaign but I'm not going to have I mean I'm not gonna, I'm just not really anybody I know aside from like maybe you do you even have Battlefront 2 uh is it listed as Star Wars Battlefront or is it listed yeah, as Star no Star Wars Battlefront as an so if it was Star Wars or just Battlefront no, um it's Star Wars. yeah nope I got KOTOR 1 and 2 yeah, so I have KOTOR 1 as well, which I still have to play through that game. So, I don't know. I mean, it's one of those games where, yeah, I mean, the single player is enjoyable, and it's fun playing with, like, all the different kinds of troops and being able to go into space combat, and that kind of switches over to ground combat in the middle of the missions. But being that it's the enemy AI is really dumb, and it just, that does, well, not really the enemy AI, your your team AI, too, is really dumb. It does track from the experience a little bit, but overall, it's a pretty fun game. I think they probably could have done a little bit more with it, maybe made it a little bit longer. But I'm like, like I said, I'm just assuming that the other missions are just as short as this one, so or as the earlier ones rather. Yeah, I. Uh... <laughs> oh man, you know what it is? All these damn bundles. I I buy these games because I. It's like, well, I can buy the one, or I can get five of them for the same price as I would have paid for the normal, the one normally. So why wouldn't I buy the five? And, like, now it's like... Yeah, why not? Oh, wait, now because you have 200 games that you have to play. Yeah, you know what? I, I, pretty, much, I pretty much buy every Humble Bundle, too. Well, for the most part. And some of them, it's like, I own five out of the eight games or whatever it is. I'm not... I won't buy it. <laughs> but... um. Actually, I should, because then I can just kind of give those games out to people that really want them. But most of those are, most of the ones that are on there, it's like, the indie games I already have, and you probably already have a lot of them too, like the really popular ones that we, we both kind of grab around the same time anyway. Yeah. Um, so, I don't know. Except, except to just go ahead and give it away to charity and everything else, but it's like, I, I, I can't see myself just Buying three games. Sometimes you can't give away the other titles. You know, it depends on how they do the bundle at the time. Because sometimes you get individual keys, sometimes you get a bundled key. And if you get a bundled key, you're SOL. <laughs> you know, you you have those games whether you want them or not. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's that. <clears throat> Oof. Well, since we talked, since we brought Blizzard up earlier, I, we there's a little bit more Blizzard news. They came out in the past week, so we'd like to talk about that game. Nah, okay. <laughs> so, um, they had it, their quarterly, com- quarterly, you know, phone conference, investor conference, whatever you want to call it, where they announced World of Warcraft subscription numbers, and they're down to 7.7 million. Mm. So people are like, you know, immediately Blizzard fanboys on the forums went into damage control, like, oh, they're still number one on the market, and blah de da and all this. And I'm like, yeah, that's true, but they're still down almost 40% of their subs from the peak of it, roughly 12 million. Yeah, 12 million seems the highest somewhere, point. Somewhere thereabouts. And they, I uh, was it 10 or 12? I can't even remember. Was it 12 million? I mean, it's 12. So I think yeah, that was, that was, that was, that was actually, actually, I apologize. Oh yeah, that was, so it was, was 36% and they're down from just over 10 million at the beginning of, uh, Mists of Pandaria. So they're bleeding subscriptions like there's no tomorrow. Still, 7 million is, I mean, you're, of course you're gonna start losing people because at some point, like myself, like you, we, you know, we spent way too much time in this game oh. as it was. But at some point you finally say, Enough is enough, and unless you can get a game and constantly update, you know, new stuff for the player to play and, and challenge the player at the same time without 
alienating the player. And I think that's always been the big, the big thing with Blizzard was where is that healthy balance between what's challenging, what's impossible, what, who we're going to piss off, who we're going to keep happy. And yeah. we go through, and we go through expansions where it starts out to be difficult and we go, all right, a challenge. And then it all gets nerfed to holy hell. You're like, uh, this isn't fun anymore. Um, I'm, I'm bored. Done. Yeah. <laughs> and so I think that the big problem is, you know, they, they have to find that, that happy ground, the happy middle ground, and they're, they just can't find it sometimes. And I said, so some people just, you know, you have the real casual players. It's like, ah, it's just not enough. Or, it's just too much for me. I can't do it. You got the hard work game that are saying, you know, this is just too easy for me. You got the people in the middle that have been dedicated Blizzard fans for so long and they still continue to play. But at some point, someone's, everyone's going to go ahead and say, I don't care who you are, at some point you're gonna say, I think I've had enough. Yeah, and we talked about this before where we're at, we're pretty much at the point, and we have been for a while now, where everybody's made up their mind on World of Warcraft. Either they like it, they hate it, they used to play it but don't want to play it anymore, they still play it. Everybody has an opinion on this game because it's so big. So they've tapped out their market of players, and that's why you see the subscription numbers pretty much consistently going down, except for a, a little bit before Mists of Pandaria. And I think when the next time, you know, the next conference, investor call, whatever, comes around, it'll be down even further. And people say, oh, well, then they're going to announce the next expansion, and that's all fine and good, but you're not talking about that for, as we mentioned, BlizzCon's not for another three to four months. You know, not, it's not until November. Yeah, and even with a new expansion, you're not going to bring people in just by announcing it. You're going to yeah. bring people back in when you release it. Exactly. So from here until then, and, you're, and you're possibly, and, like you said, bleeding more subscriptions. And and they're not going to bring back all those subscribers either. No. So those 2.3 million plus that they've lost, there's no way all those people are coming back. So, I mean, it really was inevitable. We've talked about this a lot over the years and that it's just, it, they can't maintain it forever. There was There was no way. So, but like you said, people just get bored and move on. So that's just kind of the nature of the MMO, and especially when it's been out for eight years. I mean, again, seven million su- subscriptions is still nothing to shake a stick at. Uh, especially, it's... especially in an era where the subscription model MMO basically that's like the last one. Nobody else does that anymore. Uh, well, <laughs> Eve. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but Eve has like one tenth, less than one tenth of the subscribers. I mean, you can't even really compare the two games because they're so different. I mean, how many people out there play Eve and World of Warcraft? Yeah, nobody, uh, uh, nobody, uh. nobody does. <laughs> Eve is another one of those games where most people have an opinion on it. And most people just think it's Excel in space. <laughs> so, but anyway, that just real quick. So, if you go buy, was it fifteen dollars per month? Yeah, fifteen per month. So if I say seven million at fifteen, well, well, hold on though. What you have to consider before before you get carried away with that number is in Asia they don't pay monthly; they pay by the hour, and in, in in like cafes and stuff like that. Yeah, the inter- internet cafes are a lot more popular over there, so they don't pay monthly subscriptions for World of Warcraft. So <laughs> you 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 can't go by that. Uh, it doesn't. It doesn't work that way. Oh, uh, then what's the U.S. subscription rate then? We we don't know. Nobody knows. That's the thing is Blizzard won't tell anybody what the, what in each in each region what the subscription numbers are. Ah. So you have no way of really knowing how much money they're making from World of Warcraft. People rough, can guess. Rough estimate number going by that saying seven million. Let's say it was seven million. But of course you're gonna have plenty of people that are not a part of this model. But you take seven million. You times it by 15, it's $105 million per month, possibly, that it's still bringing in, just for a game that, you know, they have to do their maintenance and everything else, and they get new expansions coming out, new raid content coming out along the way and everything else. That's still a ridiculous amount of money that they're pulling in monthly. Like, but to like, larger company, like, that might be nothing to some people. It's like, that's, that's just enough we need to run. Like, what? Uh, no. <laughs> no, it's ridiculous. Well, the other side of this, too, since we're talking about Blizzard and and how much money they make and all that kind of stuff, is they just bought out their share of stocks from Vivendi, which was their overall owner. Yep. So they're now publicly traded, publicly owned, whatever kind of company. So they spent, 
Eight. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, it was like eight point two billion dollars buying up their shares from Vivendi, and from what I had read, they were Vivendi was talking about rating Active Blizz's cash shares to pay off their debt. I think they were talking about taking upwards of two billion dollars from Active Active Blizz, and that would have left them with one billion. So it sounds like a lot of money, but when you're developing, when you're on this hard release cycle of Call of Duty, one game a year. And all that, and you've got all these multiple Blizzard projects, and you know, one billion it can go pretty quickly. So, but it, they they went ahead and bought out their shares from from Vivendi, and it was Kotick and some other groups and stuff. It's not really in, that interesting, but I just wanted to mention that. So it'll be interesting to see if they go in a different direction with any other games or whatever. Probably not, but. It's, it's, I guess it's one thing you pull yourself, I mean, Activision and, Activision is, is such a huge company as itself. Blizzard's a huge company, you know, that merger happened. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, it, it's kind of interesting to see that a large company like this, they even want to be away from the person that's above them. Everybody wants to be on top, you know, everyone doesn't want to, they don't want to answer to somebody else above them. So, I mean, I can't blame them for wanting to get the hell out of LA from Vendi and everything else. Just just get the hell out. And, well, uh, especially if they were trying to raid their cash <laughs> store, raid, raid, you know, how much mo- raid the money that they had saved away, too. That's that wasn't that's not good for them. Yeah. No, let's just say Kodak and Kelly buying 172 million shares mm-hmm. for $2.4 billion in an investor group. How big is this group? I, how much money does Bobby Kodak have? <laughs> was, clearly got a lot of money. God damn. Yeah, they bought him. Yeah, they bought 170, 172 million for 2.3 billion. So, and then the rest were bought for 5.83 billion. So that's a lot, man. <laughs> so they got to make this thing work, though, and I think they will over the long term. People seem to like their games, so. I think they'll. I think they'll make it work. I mean, you're not gonna. I mean, you really have to fuck up with Call of Duty to to chase away your fan base because I come in, I play every year, and I go, eh, it's Call yeah. of Duty, you know, and I'll play it, and I'm like, yeah, it's all right. I, I've bought a few of them. I can't, you know, I I can't lie about that, and I played the review because it's like it's fun to sit around and play with your friends. Like if it's, it's if it's a game that most of your friends on a console are buying, and you always have those friends to play with, yes, the game stays fun, and the game stays interesting. The campaign, yeah, I play through it for the achievements. But you go back into multiplayer to play with good old Joanna and hear all oh, the new insults she has for people every single time that we play. Uh, but I have not bought Black Ops 2. I don't plan on buying Black Ops 2. And I really don't think I'm planning on buying Ghosts either. So I kind of alienate myself from any JoJo time. <laughs> when it comes down to gaming, it's like you know, it's you know that I played Rock Band, and I I can't play Rock Band anymore. I'm done. I'm tapped out. No more Suffragette City. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Real quick here, since we're talking, since and we know we talked about Diablo, and you mentioned Torchlight Two. Torchlight Two was sold over two million copies. Nice. So at what point do we stop considering them an indie gaming company? Because you're not selling millions of copies if you're Indie, you know, it just doesn't work that way. Well, you have to take in consideration that a lot of this may be going. Well, how much of that was generated from the Steam sale, though? I they I don't know. They didn't say. It just I the only thing I saw was the article said that they sold two million. I'm, I'm sure some I'm sure some of it was, but I don't believe the majority of it. I don't want to say majority, but I do think it, it was a nice little push over that into that direction. Oh, I, absolutely. I mentioned. I think the. Two weeks ago, they, uh, we talked about Fez and how the Steam Summer Sale, you know, he sold more on, in that week, in those first couple days or whatever, than he had in the first three months on Steam and in the first month on Xbox Live. So, yeah, it makes a huge difference. Yeah, and um, I, I, mean, think about, I mean, think about these little studios that go and they make something and it completely blows up. Like, Jesus, look at the Rovio guys. I don't even know, I don't even know how big their team is. But they made that stupid fucking Angry Birds game, and that thing is everywhere now. <laughs> that name is on everything. It, it was a 99 cent app 
on the uh, the uh, Apple Store, which then moved to Android. It's on PC. You can buy it. I think you can buy it for thirty bucks on portable consoles and on desktops. I don't know why they charged thirty. They had some reasoning for why they did it that way. I don't know. But then you have this. This is what kills me. You have Angry Birds. The video game that's been made into a game where you build it up like fucking Jenga and shoot birds at the wooden blocks. <laughs> you, you know, turn I'll, a video game into a desktop game. That's the exact same thing. I'll I'll one up you on that. We have video. We have Angry Birds fruit snacks. I got those. They're Seven Eleven. I saw those. Yeah. I went, what the fuck? Yeah. They have all kinds of Angry Birds stuff, backpacks and books and shirts. binders and, yeah, what, yeah, the shirts and just, yes, yeah, it's, it's Angry Birds overload, really. Yeah. I want to hold people, that. people eat it up too. I know. And it's, it's not just, just, it's not just kids either. I, you think just, it would, you think it would just be kids, but it's not. It's not. It's everybody. Yeah. Everybody, yeah. everybody does this. Like, I, it, 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 yeah. And that's what they release different modes. So you have that one, you have the Seasons one, you have the Star Wars one, you have the In Space, you have all this other stuff. And uh, let's see here. Actually, it started out as three people. Like, that's ridiculous. Like, that right there. Little itty bitty people, little company. Little, you know, didn't have shit. But net income was. Looks like 152 million for 2012. That was revenue. Net income was 55.5 million for 2012. Now, now they're up to 550 employees too. So I don't, I don't know. I I want to see what the what the other years like when Angry Birds first really took off. So 2011's numbers are really what I want to see, but I can't see that anywhere. But hey, is this just a little thing? You you if you make a good game, if you make just like the simplest idea and you make it something absolutely wonderful, your shit can blow up farther than you ever even imagined. So like little games like Fez or games like Torchlight and everything else from these, these any developers, like if you make something and people like it and it spreads and people say yes, 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 bye, 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 yeah, of course you can sell two million copies of any developer. I have no problems with them. You're still... Well, to, and to be <laughs> fair to Angry Birds, it, it, is, it is a fun, enjoyable little game. I mean, I don't have anything against it just because it's like a casual game or whatever. It's not something that I'm gonna play every day, but maybe bored at work, they have it on the desktops, you know, the display models. Sometimes I go over there and play it or whatever. I played the shit out of it. Okay, I did when it came out. I played the shit out of it, and it was frustrating as hell at times because I was always <laughs> competing with Scott. Because uh, he'd be like, "Oh, well, I got this many stars now." I'm like, "You motherfucker!" Oh, God. Catch up to you. Yeah, but it's just it's ridiculous to how far it's actually blown up to yeah I, everywhere. I agree with that yeah I, I can agree with that it is everywhere it's become a, it's become as much of a marketing campaign as as it is a game yeah I mean you look at stuff like I mean what are the other big ones that have definitely made this cross I mean you you have let's say let's take Pokemon for instance they've definitely made that jump across Everything you saw when Pokemon was big, you saw everywhere. There were your fucking McDonald's toys. They were clothing lines. They were backpacks. They were. Uh, they may have been fruit snacks. I don't know. They're frozen dinners, maybe. Well, you could even go back to like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah. Too. I mean, that was huge back in the '80s and the '90s, and they had. I had a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles backpack. I mean, they had everything from you know they had backpacks, Halloween costumes. They had. I think they had a cereal at one point. <laughs> so they did. It was terrible. Yeah, so this is nothing new. No, it's nothing. It's really nothing, nothing new. It's but, nothing, you know, but but you don't see you don't see turtles getting the hate that Angry Birds does, and I'm I'm wondering why not because I'd rather play Angry Birds than the first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game. Oh, well, yeah. By any by <laughs> uh, any any measure, you know. <laughs> yeah, that one. Yeah, well, that one was terrible. Yeah, well, and they did get better. To but be turtles, fair, yet. But Turtles Four. But but to be fair, also it's been a long time since there's been a really good Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game. I mean, you basically got those few games that came out between like the end of the Nintendo era and the end of the Super Nintendo era that were good, and that's about it. Most of the other games are not good. I feel like we have completely like jumped from point to point. What what was our original <laughs> point? We were talking about Torchlight, oh. and then we, and then you started talking about Angry Birds, and then we. 
said, you know, that's nothing new, and that's when we started talking about turtles. I'm glad that you remember that. Okay, cool. No, Torchlight, more power to them. Two million copies, yeah. that's awesome. <laughs> so, so, and that, that, that kind of does lead into the next thing, which, which is about the Xbox One, which is Tim's favorite topic. Mm-hmm. So real quick before I get into the meat of it, they did announce today that the they did announce the cost of uh, buying a new controller. Yes. So did you see that? Yes. So it's fifty nine ninety nine, which is absolutely outrageous to me that they're charging sixty dollars for a controller. Mm. And not only that, that doesn't come with anything. So that's just the controller, not even the charger. So just take without it says no charging kits, headsets. Um. Oh well, it says I'm sorry. Xbox controllers will be fifty nine ninety nine without the charging kit. That's and, ridiculous without yeah. the charging kit. Yeah. So Go that's ahead. that's basically just the controller itself. So the controller and the charge kit is seventy four ninety nine. Uh. So, so you do get a discount if you buy them together. You get a ten dollar discount because the charge kit by itself is twenty four ninety nine. So that's eighty five dollars. But even still, seventy five dollars for a controller, that's insane. And you know there's gonna be people out there that are gonna be breaking these damn things and having to spend seventy five dollars every time they do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or sixty bucks. I guess you can take the charge kit out if, if you if you don't break it, but that's yeah, that, that's that, what happens when we go start going to uh, GameStop at that point and finding the uh, the Mad Cats controllers or whatever that yeah. is. Like, yeah, that industry is gonna blow up. Those knockoff controllers just because no one wants to pay the sixty fucking dollars for a controller. Yeah, a, a controller it's the cost of a game. That's more than the cost of the game with the charge pack. With, with the charge kit, yeah, I and mean, just space controller. That's the, that's the cost of a game. And the new they're internal batteries though, aren't they? I. Do not know. I'm trying to remember if they if they went down Sony's route with the PS3 and they actually made them internal batteries, so you need to charge them. I'm not sure. I don't know about. That. I don't know because can't can't the 360 controllers run off of like double A's? Yep. So yeah, I'm, they, I'm, they, I'm, they have removable battery packs on those. Yeah. Yeah. See, I don't I don't know how it works with the one. Yet. Oh. But either way, that's uh, expensive <laughs> to say the least. But Plain and charge kit. Oh, okay, I see it. No, it's still a battery pack. Okay. It's just, because otherwise that would be ridiculous. Seventy-five fucking dollars. Yeah, and and then the headset itself is twenty-five, which actually isn't bad, really. I mean, that's about that's about an average price for a, a headset. I well, I hope that Xbox the Xbox One headset's a lot better than the original one. I mean, you can't hear shit in some of those. Oh well, I don't. I never used it, so I can't say. I, I buy a Turtle Beach for a reason, and you know I never look back after that. Because some of those, those just those, the basic model headsets, I always have problems with them. I could never really hear right. And in the heat of battle, I would always rip the fucking cord right out of the controller every yeah. single time, or it gets stuck on my shirt or something like that. And like, oh no, 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 no. I have to put my plug my shit back in, and then I die. And, yeah. I had to send mine back because they broke three months after I bought them. No. Yeah, they, way to go, Turtle Beach. We'll see how these hold up. But, so that's kind of the minor point for the Xbox One that I wanted to make. The major point, then, would be that I believe it was last Wednesday. So, Game Informer got a hold of a story. Yeah, it was last Wednesday. They got a hold of a story where they said that Microsoft would allow self-publishing mm-hmm. on on the one, and they also said that they would make a, they, it would have a 14-day certification process. So apparently, the certification process for self-published games before took considerably longer. I don't know exactly how long, but apparently, it took much, much longer. So they, you know, and then later on that day, they went ahead and announced it and said, "Yes, this is this is true," which is great. That was one of my two major complaints about the one where it was no self-publishing and the always on connect. So, go ahead and sound like you're going to say something. Oh, real quick, because I was just reading this thing. I was looking at RSU while you're saying this because I bought the same article and it says that, um, the approval process to target an iTunes style 14 day turnaround from submission to release rather than going over code with a fine tooth comb, Microsoft will reportedly look at high level terms of service violations and massive bugs instead. 
This should be welcome news to many developers who've described the process of getting their games on Xbox Live as excruciating. And that comes from uh, Kyle Orland over at Opposable Thumbs on our Technica. If you want to find the rest of that article, too. Now, is there something to be said for the longer approval process? Because they then, then they can make sure that games don't have any serious game-breaking bugs at when they come out on this. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know what the... I mean, yeah, they said that they go over the code extensively, but is there any kind of advantage to that? I don't know. I mean, I guess what Microsoft was trying to do was to make sure that, you know, they tested everything up and down just to make sure that there wasn't anything, I guess, that... I mean, so it could I, be like maybe maybe something that could damage the console itself or race po- save games or something like that. Possibly. I mean, okay. I don't know. I mean, if they if they say they're going everything with a high tooth, uh, a fine tooth comb, they're definitely doing a lot of quality control to make sure that whatever they're releasing on their platform is playable, not mm-hmm. broken, won't you know? Just you get, I think there were some titles or something along the line that would actually erase entire hard drives or corrupt data on hard drives. I remember yeah. old PlayStation Two issues I had. Where I had, you know, games that would corrupt my entire storage unit. And it was a known issue, and there's nothing you could really do about it. It, mm-hmm. it was like, you're fucked. All those games, gone. Like that. Boom. Um, now, I don't know. Now, to go along with that, um, they also announced that every Xbox can be turned into a debug mode. So, I guess what they're allowing now is for more public beta testing of games, because it says that the, it says they will, these, um, beta tests will be run via hardware prov- provisioning on Xbox One with the process reportedly to be enabled for up to 25,000 users per test at launch. So it sounds like they're gonna have open beta testing on Xbox One as well. Which is pretty cool. Cause that way, like for example with the game like Fez where they did have a bug where it was the save game bug, they possibly could have found that before the game released and then avoided that a very expensive patching process, which they're changing with this console as well, but if they had that before, something that they could have avoided. Uh, one more little line here. Also confirmed the reports that all Xbox One systems can be used as dev kits, but said the future will be added at a later date. Okay. So they definitely want to give the power to the people who want to create. Yeah, which is good. That's, that's what we wanted to hear from from the get-go. Mm-hmm. We didn't want to hear that there's no cell, you know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you, see, my cup holds the exact opposite. It's like, mm-hmm. you, you can't have your games here. Yeah. Um, they were really closing their platform down and, and that was going to turn a lot of people away. And there were people who came out right away and said, we're just not even going to waste our time with Xbox One because it, what's the point? We're, we're indie. We don't want a big publisher. We want to do our own thing. And so we're just going to release on PC and PS4. And the hell with them. Mm-hmm. And I don't blame them either because I felt the same way. But luckily they are reversing their policy on that. I didn't think that was going to last. You're shutting off a market there. And there were a lot of games that sold really well. You know, you go back to Fez, Super Meat Boy got really popular. I think Raid was a la- was uh, launched on Xbox Live. Plenty of other games. Castle Crashers is another one that was pretty popular. So mm-hmm. you're just shutting off part of your market. And that was really dumb of them. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean it's uh oh ow, 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 ow. sorry. That's okay. Pro- problem over there too. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Okay. Maybe possibly. So so this goes into the next part of what I wanted to what I wanted to bring up, she which is up. this 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 relates to Fez two mm. and this whole mess and drama and just it's just absolutely ridiculous what happened and. Both sides of this really can share some blame. One, I feel more so than the other. But so what happened is Game Informer, apparently, before this story was confirmed, mind you, they went to Phil Fish, who was the creator of Fez, and Jonathan Blow, who was the creator of Braid, and they asked them about this stuff. And how do you guys feel about this? And it was at that point unconfirmed. And I don't, I have not read their responses or seen any videos to what they responded, but apparently they did, they did not want to comment. And they didn't just say no comment. They said, I guess something to the effect of stop asking us about this and yada yada. Mm-hmm. I can't say for certain what they said, but they, they, it was definitely more than just a no comment. So 
later on, there was a fellow by the name of... Jonathan Blow. No, Jonathan Blow is the guy from Braid. Oh, sorry. Um, sorry, Marcus, mean, Marcus Beer. Yes, Marcus Beer, who run, who is part of a team on the Game Trailers. They have a show called Invisible Wall, I think, something like that. And they just and he he has this whole like I'm an angry British guy persona, and he goes on there and he drops a bunch of f bombs and he's just one of those like oh I'm just gonna say what's on my mind, which is fine. But he, I guess, took exception to their reaction of Phil Fish and Jonathan Blow to these questions they were being asked. And he went on a pretty lengthy tirade about how he, he told, said how he felt about Phil Fish, really in particular. He didn't really target Jonathan Blow so much as he targeted Phil Fish. So he called them hipsters and toss pots, uh, which that must be some kind of a British. I'm not sure what that exactly means. I know what a tosser is, but I don't know what a toss pot is. Uh, he referred to Phil Fish specifically as whiny and called him, quote, a fucking asshole most of the time. <laughs> and his rationale behind these claims were that they, because they were reluctant to talk about these issues. And Phil Fish came back and in Phil Fish fashion, as you can expect, and mm-hmm. was not happy. Mm-mm. And apparently he launched his own four-letter word tirade in response to Mr. Marcus Beer, which is an awesome name, by the way. I wish I wish my last name was Beer. <laughs> it so, would be a good name to have. Yeah, me. and he basically told at one point, and and so far I think I don't think really Marcus Beer had much business personally attacking Phil Fish like that. Now I understand that's kind of his shtick on game trailers, but if he had just been critical of him as far as like, oh, you know, they didn't want to pass, you know, they don't, they didn't want to comment. They always want to complain, but then they don't want to comment on these things. I could see how maybe he would have an argument there, but when you get to the personal level, I really think he crossed the line there. Now, as I said, Phil Fish and Phil Fish fashion crossed the line just as far the other way when he told Marcus Beer to go kill himself. Yeah. In effect. Now, he didn't, I think he was trying to make a joke because apparently what he said was of a Futurama quote from Bender. He said, take one, I think he said something like, take a look at my life and then look at yours and then go kill yourself. So I'm not so sure he meant to be like 100% serious with it. But me as someone who watches Futurama, I didn't get it. I, you know, when I first saw it, I honestly thought he was saying, hey, you know, go fucking kill yourself. <laughs> Yeah, so, I mean, given, coming from him too, because he's been known to be. He, he'll, he says what's on his mind too, and if he doesn't, I mean, if he doesn't like someone or something, he will come out right out and say it, which there's something to be said for that, but I think Phil Fish, you know, you know how like, you and I, we work with people, okay, and we have that filter. Yeah. Where it's, you wanna, you wanna tell this customer to fuck off, but you know you just can't do it. Yeah. We have that filter. Phil Fish does not have that filter. He, 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 I think he really should, and I'm not, I can't tell the guy how to run his business or whatever, but if it had been me, I would have hired a PR guy because I don't, he clearly doesn't get how to interact with the public. Now, a lot of the things that he said don't really bother me. I, as I mentioned, I do think telling the guy to go kill himself, even if it might have been tongue in cheek, probably was a little going a little overboard. So that's where I think he crossed the line. And he even tweeted as well that he was just, he didn't want to comment, as I mentioned, he didn't want to comment before Microsoft actually confirmed on it. So I can't really fault him for not wanting to comment on a rumor. But he could have just said, no comment, I don't comment on rumors, instead of whatever he apparently said to Game, Game Informer. Which, I, like I said, I haven't read, but I'm going to assume it wasn't just a no comment. Yeah, and I'm trying coming, to follow some stuff up here. Yeah, see, I, I didn't, I couldn't find it. I don't know if it's in the issue of Game, and, if, you know, in a, in the next issue or what. I don't know, but you know, this whole thing has just been absolutely ridiculous. It, you got these two people, one guy who's just a talking head. You know, I don't really care what he thinks. If he went on his show next week and said Daryl and Tim are the two biggest idiots on the internet and fuck them and all that, dude, whatever, dude. I don't care what you think about me. But 
he, he's obviously got his thing that he does, and I don't know if he was just fishing for a reaction, you know, no pun intended, from Phil Fish or what, but but basically the, the conclusion here is that Phil Fish later on then tweeted that he's getting out of the gaming industry, and he says, I choose not to put up with this abuse anymore. And, you know, basically Fez 2 is canceled, and then that was later confirmed by Polytron. So that's kind of what it is. He says, I'm done. Fez 2 is canceled. Goodbye. He locked his account to uh, his Twitter account, mm-hmm. and that was it. So as far as anyone can currently tell, uh, Phil Fish is out of the gaming industry, and Fez 2 is canceled. Yeah, and now he has always been. Like you said, he, he doesn't. He he doesn't he's have. A polar- a... He's a polarizing figure. I get that. Yeah, I really do. But and and like I said, I just you know, if it had been me, I would have hired a PR guy. I mean, he probably. I don't know how much money he made off of off of Fez, but I mean, I know it sold pretty well. Maybe he couldn't afford it. I don't know. But you know, let. Somebody else do the talking for you. I mean, when when Fez was developed, he was is he a one man team? He no, it when, was there was well there was two people working on the game. Two people because I I actually just I what I did was I went back and I watched Indie Game the movie because yeah. he's in that mm-hmm. and that's where I, you know I learned it. It was just a two man team. They had he had a business partner who I think he ran Polytron with. They didn't really go into specifics of that, but that's that's what I think is that. He had himself and one other person working on the game, and then he had a business partner who was not working on the game, but it was, I guess was helping with promotion and stuff like that, and just kind of helping handle the legal end of it. I, this, I, mean, I, I, I just read more and more of this, and I, I just... I... It, it really just makes these two people look like a couple of idiots, to be perfectly honest with you. And I'm more on Phil Fish's side, because I don't think this beer guy had, really has any business personally attacking... Phil Fish, and I can understand from his perspective what he's saying. He's like, you know, I'm tired of, you know, being bitched at as far as Phil Fish himself goes. He's just, you know, I'm tired of the abuse from the internet and all that kind of stuff. I, I can't say he brought it on himself, you know, but the internet and especially the gaming community doesn't really like people who will go on Twitter and, and, and you know, say fuck off to fans and stuff like that. They're not going to take too, too kindly to that. You know, some people just shouldn't be on social media, and I think he's, you know, he's one of them. It's toxic for some people. It really is. And this is a case where if he hadn't been on there, you know, I mean, he had just been developing, um, developing his game and letting somebody else handle the social media side, I think it would have just been, a, hey, a no comment, and then this would have just blown over. But he kind of does his own thing, and this is where we're at, where he's now leaving the games industry, unfortunately, which sucks too, because, you know, here we are driving away, you know, a really creative person that Fez 2 could have been even better than Fez 1. We don't know. We'll never know now, because as far as we can tell, the game is canceled. So just it just makes them both look like a couple of whiny little children at the end of the day. Like, you're supposed to be adults. Like, come on, grow up, people. I mean, you have to know by coming into this industry. I mean, I, I mean, you, you gotta I, have I, a thicker I, skin, really. I, I, res- I respect Phil Fish for what he has done for us. I mean, Fez, mm-hmm. in terms of a game, is is a great, great title that it has. Yeah. It's gotten a lot of attention. People love it. Yeah. But but you are now jumping into an industry and coming to it's- a world that you can have a target painted on your back so fast. Absolutely. It's cutthroat. It really is. And he said in the movie, in Indie Game, the movie, that he was like, I didn't expect to have an army of assholes on the Internet constantly coming at me and stuff like that. And I'm like, well, you know, that's just how it is. I mean, that happens to everybody, really. I mean, unless you're like a super well-respected developer, like a Valve or something like that. Then yeah, I mean, there's going to be a lot of people out there, and there's still people that give Valve shit too. It's just how it's just how it's going to be, and I, that's why I'm saying is I just think he probably should have just gotten off the social media and just no comment. You know, I'm I'm developing my game, let me do my thing, and leave me alone. Yeah, I just I, I mean I, I, I don't know. but I think it's too bad too that that he's let this this beer guy and and other people dictate his career to him like. He's out of the games industry, as far as we can tell. 
it, I just think it's too bad that he let that happen. You're letting other people basically control what you're going to do with your life. You know, that sucks. But he's, he even admitted in the movie, too, he's like, he's like, I know I shouldn't care what people think about me, but I do. He really, I mean, so that some people are just like that. I mean, it, me, it, if it were me, I, I can't say that I wouldn't react the same way as him. I really couldn't. Like, if I, like, I can take people giving me shit because it happens. People give you lots of shit. Yeah, people give me lots <laughs> of shit. And sometimes it's a little much, I will say. <laughs> Because yeah. I feel, why the hell are you people constantly bashing me when all I do is show you love? You know, and uh, I, it, it becomes kind of irritating, but for the most part, I just kind of, you know, yeah, bear it and left. Shoulders, it yeah. rolls off. But if, but that's on a level of, it's you, it's a couple of coworkers, it's a couple of other friends, yeah. some people from the website. Now, scaled down, it's still nowhere near the level that he's he's getting it from. But if yeah. he were constantly getting if I'm sitting on Twitter and I'm getting notifications every second with some guy calling me a toss pot, a fucker, a piece of shit, my game yeah. sucks, the stuff that I put my hard work, you know, all this hard work into, somebody saying absolutely sucks dick and all this other stuff, at some point, enough would be enough. And I would, in fact, lose it. And I would probably blow up in the style that he did. It, he, and and he and if you watch the movie, he went through a lot of shit getting Fez out there. He really did. It's not just like, oh, he's some guy with tons of money, and now he's just gonna, oh, I'm just gonna make a game. I mean, he went through a lot of shit. He lost his grant from the Canadian government. He had all this shit with his former business partner that he went through. For God's sake, the guy's girlfriend left him while he was making the damn game. I mean, <laughs> like, yeah. you know, so he went through a ton of shit putting this game out. So I can see how it would all build up over time. So it's really hard for me to, to really put myself in his shoes and say, yeah, I would have just said fuck it because here's my creation that I spent, you know, years and, and poured my heart and soul into. I've never really been in that situation before, but for me, you know, I would, first off, I don't even, I, like I said, I didn't even know who this guy was before last week. This beer guy. Oh. And secondly, I still don't really give a shit about him. He's just, like I said, he's some, he's some fucking talking head on game trailers. Who gives a shit what he thinks? I certainly don't. That's like I said, if he's, if he went on tomorrow and said, hey, Tim and Daryl and that two guys won cartridge show, they suck and they're toss pots and faggots and hipsters or whatever. I'd just go fuck yourself, dude. You don't like what I do? Don't listen to it. We go beat the fuck out of him. <laughs> oh wait, that wasn't the right response. Yeah. Sure. Oh. No. No. Oh, yeah. yeah. Fuck, fuck that guy. I mean, we've been doing this shit for years. Getting on five years almost. Not you and I. I mean, the show's been around. The, the, the show, yeah, but I mean, so. you you've been around from the beginning it's, almost. It, and it, yeah, it, I mean, I was first on episode four, so I you know I've had a little invested in it from the beginning. Yeah, so the show's been around for a couple of years, mm-hmm. you know, and it's been a, a product. And do we get a lot of listens? No. Do we bring in new people? Yeah. And do we slowly, you know, bring our audience in? I mean, for the amount of money that we spend on advertising, which is zero, zero. <laughs> um, <laughs> and relying on word of mouth and everything else, you know, I can't say that I'm too disappointed with it. I, I can't say I'm disappointed with it because it's, it's money that I'm not willing to spend because it's just like it's it's just something to have fun with. It, it, yeah, I mean, this is just something we kind of do on the side. It's not our lives. We don't make money off of this. This is no. just something we do for fun. I wish we did. Well, it would make things easier. We still yeah, want to make. You got to spend money to make money. That's I know. Oh, I know. And <laughs> the thing is, is like if in terms of like the the full on website and everything else, if everyone were to get back in the game and contribute and do everything else, yeah, I would start taking everything more seriously. But at the way it stands right now, I don't take things seriously, and I just like having fun and you know mm-hmm. getting together and and doing the show with you. It's just it's just fun. Have we gotten blasted before from people? Sure. Back in the blog talk days when people could actively join into our shit and give us shit as we were yeah. saying shit, that's a whole lot of shit. Yeah. People were giving a shit about our shit while we were saying our shit. Uh, hey, yo, dog. I heard you like shit. Yeah, I'm going to shit on your shit. Your <laughs> shit. <laughs> Uh, and it was, it was, it was rough, you know, cause we yeah. would, we would be actively criticized as we were recording it. Now, you take someone like 
Steve, who I would compare Steve to... Steve would be another polarizing figure, because yeah. I, I can appreciate on some level his not politically correct sense of humor, but at other times there were things that he said that I would deem inappropriate. Sometimes you just gotta learn when to turn the nozzle down. And, and yeah, and and he's he's another person who doesn't have that filter, right? That I described earlier. So it's it's like we would have him around, and if someone gave us shit, Steve would let him have it because mm-hmm. he didn't give a shit. Me, I would, I would take. I was always the one that would take it personally. Like I was the only one that used to get all hurt about people saying, "You know, yeah. your, show, your show sucks," and I'm like, "Oh, well." I'd just be like, "Yeah, it does." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but when we were getting started, like, that was the big, that was the exciting thing for us. He's like, hey, you know, we, we've been playing this for years, and here we are finally doing it, and all this everything, and someone comes out and says, your show sucks. I'm like, well, this is like the first couple of weeks that we've been doing this at this point. And it takes time, and now he, here we are over three years in the making, and the show has become what it is today. We've, we've spent more money, we, we've upgraded equipment, we've changed well, services. Yeah. Yeah, we've learned a lot about how to do make a better podcast. At least we hope it's better. I yeah. think it's better. Yeah. Well, you know what? Here's the thing. When I was when I was putting together that best of show, and you go from <laughs> the blog talk audio, and yeah. when it immediately switches over to the "Hey, we're on our own stuff" audio, it's absolutely it's it's, a, it's night and day. Yeah. yeah. There's, no, there's no comparison. Except for one of the the first few episodes that we were on our own stuff because that was when we were still well learning. We were still yeah, we we're still learning. Yeah. I mean, I remember the first day we went to record without using the, uh, without using, um, uh, yeah, blog talk. Yeah. You were telling me how to do something in some way, and I was like, okay. We had to do like an audio in and an audio out with two different devices. Like, I have two laptops. Let's see if this works. So I actually had two laptops con- connected together, trying to record your audio and my audio <laughs> and try to make it all work. And it didn't work. It failed horribly. And then after, Fucking with it for, I don't know, I think it was like four hours. I think we even said during the show that you and I had been working on this all day, so people better enjoy the fact that we finally figured out how to do this. Um, and that was a story that, that, yeah, that was the same day that Ammo set his kitchen on fire almost with nuking his pancakes. Yeah, I yep. remember. That was right after Steve's house burnt down. Yeah, all that in the same time. And, and then I just, and then I discovered, um, MP3 or Skype recorder. Yeah. And then we, all that crap went away. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> then, like, much I had all these tools out and all yeah. those stuff. I'm like, I'm going to build the most monstrosity of laptops combined. And no, it didn't, I didn't need to do any of that. And, uh, here we are, very simple microphone and MP3 Skype recorder and, and Audacity. And yeah. just like that, we have a show. Yep. But we get shit. We don't really get shit anymore. No one ever tells us. I mean, when our stuff sucks. Oof. Yeah, all, all we get is uh, Tim writing positive reviews of himself on uh, Netflix <laughs> or uh, iTunes. I did not. I'm write still, a... I'm still convinced that was you. <laughs> I did not. I did not. It, you know my screen name for any account that I use, pretty much. It's you some... could have made a fake account. You have email addresses. I don't make fake accounts. It wasn't me, but I, I think I know who it was. <laughs> I think I know who it was, but you know, I don't. I don't write reviews for my own stuff. Okay. I don't. And that's that's just that's just that's, that's just, sad, man. Yeah, that's that would be sad. That'd be low. I I don't know if I could do this anymore if you actually did that. Yeah. No, I mean, like so much. Like you, you when we start upgrading to like the, the larger forums, like when we start doing uh, the YouTube and everything else, especially mm-hmm. when we, especially when Guild Wars Two was out, and we just recorded everything, and then, like shit that was funny to us at two o'clock in the morning when we're all drunk, we would just put out there and like, hey. This is some good shit, right? And then we get blasted. It's like, oh, <laughs> no. I, the Guild Wars dance party did not really get. Oh, that was, no, nah, that wasn't good. No, I, was... I watched about 15 seconds of that. And then, and then, I, and then I scrolled my, my bar along, you know, the bottom of the video to see just the preview yep. of the rest of the video. And all I saw was the same screen, yep. Yep. the same stupid characters dancing. And I was yep. like, well, this sucks. Yep. This, this like, I think I actually did this like that. <laughs> I'm just saying, it's shit that happens at 2 o'clock in the morning when we... I, I know. I've been a part of it. I know all about it. You don't have to tell me. Yeah. And, but, uh, uh, I don't know. Anybody we, say, we, we definitely, uh, yeah, but, you know, it, it's, we have a much smaller range of people, but 
when we do get the insults, because if that's the only thing we hear, because we don't get a lot of feedback anyway as it is, it does hurt. And we'll think, well, can you tell us why it sucks? Instead of, it just it sucks. Suck. Or you guys go fucking kill yourselves or die in a fire or something like that. Like, well, explain to us why we should go die in a fire. Like, what did you not enjoy about the show? What did you not enjoy about what we're producing? Like, cause that's, we want to know because I'd love feedback. Because otherwise, I was going to go ahead and keep on making dick forests in Minecraft and posting them online because honestly, I find those hilarious. Yeah. But I don't do those anymore. I did it one time. It was fun. I was drunk. I was in Minecraft. First time playing Minecraft. And, uh, yeah. But feedback is always good. Even if you're trying to tell us the show sucks, you know, again, tell us why. But then again, that's the thing with like this whole Phil Fishing and everything else. People come out and blast him like, yeah, fuck that guy. That fuck yeah. piece of shit. Worthless. Fuck, fuck him. Game. I'm going to pirate his game and all that. Yeah. Yeah. His fucking game is worthless. It's the biggest piece of shit I've ever played. Like, no, it's not. I guarantee you've played something far worse. Oh, absolutely, yeah. And if you're just jumping on the fucking internet bandwagon like everybody else, and it's just like, why, why even do that? So I, I come to the defense of Phil Fish, and I, and I will. And yeah, I know you're pretty much leaning towards him, too. I mean, I, I take a, I take more on his side, cause like I said, I don't think this beer guy had any place really calling him out as far as, first off, he didn't get all the facts, because Phil Fish didn't want to comment on a rumor. Now, uh, how he communicated that, I don't know, like I said. But at the same time, I just don't think he had any business personally attacking the guy either. No, I, I really think you didn't. And just come out and blast some guy and and just really – and tear – like, to come out on – I got to go listen to the audio of this guy because I keep on seeing it pop up. And I just want to hear what he actually says about Phil. I mean, he called him, like I said. He said he's whiny and a fucking asshole most of the time. And just, yeah, that's, you know, like I said, he just kind of goes off on him, so. I, eh. But at the same time, like I said, I just think that, you know, Phil himself, he shouldn't have told the guy to go kill himself, as even if it was just a joke, and he shouldn't be on social media. <laughs> no. I don't know any other way to put it. He, Like I said, it's toxic for some people, and he's one of them, and, you know, the let somebody else handle that. Let let your business partner at Polytron handle the handle the social media and the and the interviews and stuff like that. Yeah, you think the you majority can, of them anyway. You, you say to yourself, "I think I can handle it," until it starts happening and it comes in, when it comes in mass, you just go, yeah. I, "I don't know how to handle it." And again, like I said, if I was him, I, I mean, if it was like a he the moment thing and everyone's coming down at you at the same time, you know, I'm gonna lash. I mean, it's just it's it's human nature for it's like that fight or flight moment. Either you're gonna get the hell away or you're gonna fight back. And, uh, I honestly, I can't, I can't say that I wouldn't handle it the same way. I mean, yeah. really. I mean, if someone started calling me a piece of shit and kept on just bashing me and everyone joined in on it, I would, I wouldn't, I mean, I wouldn't tell somebody to go kill themselves, but I would tell them to go fuck themselves. Mm-hmm. Easily tell yeah. them that. Oh yeah, I'd tell you fuck off right, right away. If, if you push me to that point, otherwise I'd most likely just ignore you. Yeah. But, Man, my biggest hey, response now with you guys is just, uh-huh. That's, that's, <laughs> that's the whole, uh, situation there. You know, I might have left out like one or two things, but it's not good. It makes everybody in this industry look stupid and look like children and just, it just something that shouldn't have been done on either side, really. Yeah, it makes these review sites look like pieces of shit too. Well, I mean, I don't really, I really have no use for game trailers as it is. I really don't. I never go there. I mean, a site that shows game trailers, that's called YouTube. Yeah. So the only time I ever go to game trailers is for the E3 coverage. And honestly, I could live without that. So I really have no use for game trailers. I don't care what they say. So, yeah. so that's, uh, really, I don't have anything else. It actually to, works I'm, out. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say, I'm, I'm trying to just double check here to make sure I didn't leave anything out as far as any little other details. I don't see anything else that would be pertinent to this. If there is something that we missed, I'm sure we'll update it on the next show or whatever. Mm-hmm. So, but as I said, you know, one last time, it's just bad situation for everybody involved. It is. I mean, to the point is you push a guy completely out of it. I mean, he just, he, you have an emotional breakdown and you leave. You know, I mean, didn't the same shit kind of happen to Dave Chappelle, but his is more of, he got too much fame too fast. He didn't know how to handle it. Like, once you get uh, too much of something, 
<laughs> I don't really know. You men- you break down mentally and you fucking just disappear. <laughs> I know, I know he disappeared, but I, I don't know. I think, mean, I think mean, it was, I think his, his was more of a, people just loved him too much, but I mean, it's kind of the same thing. It's just, you get too much of one thing, you know, good or bad, and you, you can't, your brain just can't process it. So. You gotta, you gotta get out. So. Anyway, I think we gotta go ahead and end it there. Uh, so this has been another episode of 2G1C where we didn't talk about GTA 5. <laughs> we probably won't talk about him again, we probably won't talk about it again next week either. <laughs> no. But, uh, anyway, I'll let you go ahead and wrap it up. I'll do plenty of GTA 5 research for next week. Yeah, I'm sure. That, you know. that I won't talk about. Hey, there's some new screenshots that came out today. Mm. So. Oh, look at here, real quick. Uh, Mighty Quest for Epic Loot rolled back their monetization system. We'll look into that a little bit more for next week's show. Uh. So we can talk about that last week. So, anyway. Cool. Alright, well, this has been, uh, episode one, 42. 42. Yes, <laughs> so I'm trying to mumble my way through it. Uh, to you guys, one card, myself, Tim, and Daryl here, of course, as always, and uh, we'll see you here next week. Yeah, we will.